Score one for the kids this week. Children as young as four whose dentists wipe the smiles off their faces by subjecting them to cruel and unusual treatments. Imagine a five-year-old given 16 root canals in one sitting. But look who's smiling now. Here's Deborah Roberts. This is a painful scene the government says it doesn't want to see again. We have zero tolerance for those who break the law to exploit children in need. Tough words this week from investigators who insist they caught small smiles, a string of dental clinics preying on unsuspecting poor families. The harsh practices were similar to what these North Carolina children say they endured in a once related group of clinics. They said, if you don't stop crying, um, that I couldn't see my mom again. I was like, crying for my mom, and I was crying because they were hurting me. And did anybody stop? Mm -mm. I told them to stop, but they wouldn't stop. Awful memories these children recall so clearly, even years later. They just like pulled my arms back and my legs back, and then they strapped me down. I was like bleeding and crying and really swollen. And parents weren't allowed past the front desk, says Sandra Franklin. They said, oh no, you, you can't go back there, you can't go back there. Brandon's mom, Christy, says she waited two nerve-wracking hours for her five-year-old. And he comes walking out of that door with his whole shirt was full of sweat. He had blood dripping from his mouth, and all I could see was silver shining through. Silver from a mouthful of crowns just put in by the dentist. He was freaking out. And all I could do was just grab him and hold him and tell him it was going to be okay. Sandra's six-year-old daughter also told a horrifying story. She kept crying for her mom. and, and uh, It's upsetting to remember, isn't it? And she said they turned the radio really loud so that no one could hear her crying. In one sitting, Morgan had been subjected to five baby root canals plus five fillings and crowns. Jasmine had 11 baby root canals and Ontavia, 14. Hunter and Brandon each had 16 baby root canals, nearly every tooth in their mouth. All in one visit. That's mind-blowing. And you're talking four and five and three-year-old children. Yeah. I felt like they took my son's smile away. The North Carolina dental clinics were once partly owned by this man, Michael DeRose, who, with a partner, was investigated by the government for a cutthroat business model, allegedly involving unnecessary invasive and often painful dental procedures, all for money. He paid a $10 million settlement, but did not admit guilt. DeRose declined to speak with us on camera, but his Colorado home speaks volumes. A lavish seven bath, 12,000 square foot residence, complete with a pool, a hot tub, and a big new extension that'll house a dance studio and a personal gym. DeRose made a fortune after selling the Small Smiles chain three years ago. Now operating in 20 states, sources told us those clinics have had problems too. <laughs> Watch this heartbreaking treatment of a four-year-old in a Maryland Small Smiles dental chair. They get so upset, they'll throw up. Former dental assistant Debbie Sansbury worked at another Small Smiles clinic up until 2008. She told us the dentist often focused on getting the job done fast. Would the dentist stop the procedure and let the child maybe get up and calm down? <laughs> we stopped the procedure long enough to clean up the um, vomit and then return to it. Her clinic defended the quality of its treatment and said Sansbury was fired for behavioral issues. But why would anyone treat children this way? An investigation in 2008 by WJLA in Washington found one possible explanation. A ridiculous production of $7,000. We can't stay in business making $7,000. Money was a big topic at the daily staff meeting in that Maryland clinic run by Dr. Al Williams. Since Medicaid pays very little, sources told us some clinics push their employees to keep the procedures up. I don't want Langley Park to be the laughing stock of the entire Small Smiles Nation. And yesterday's stats, we are. Small I mean. Smiles offered the staff up to hundreds of dollars in productivity bonuses and thousands for the dentists. Let's go. Let's have a good one. One way to get the kids in and out faster, said former employees, was to restrain them. 
That screaming child is actually strapped to a papoose board, which holds hands and feet mummy style, allowing a dentist to keep working even if the child's hysterical. There were a lot of cases that we could have easily prevented the use of a papoose just by sparing them five minutes of their time, alleviating all their concerns. The five minutes was not deemed appropriate? Exactly. The Pediatric Dental Association allows the board's use for a child's best interest, but told us they're not acceptable to speed up the work. Yet listen to what Dr. Williams told former WJLA reporter Roberta Baskin. You could potentially spend two hours on a kid who's not, who's not stabilized and moving around. That's not cost productive for us. Here, too, parents were kept away from their children during treatment. We don't want them to see what goes on in here. Not that we are doing anything wrong, but as a parent, you wouldn't want to see your child strapped up like that. The company claimed they used the boards on just 6% of kids up to 7 years old, and only when medically necessary. But current and former employees told us that some clinics use the boards much more often than that. I feel sick to my stomach to go in in the morning. This dentist from another Small Smiles clinic asked us to conceal his identity and told us he resigned partly because he was traumatized by the children's cries. You would think that they're cutting their arms and legs off. The screams are blood-curdling. They're terrifying. He was even more disturbed by the pricier and sometimes more invasive work performed when cheaper options would do. Did you see unnecessary work? I see a lot of unnecessary work. I see a lot of over-treatment. At one Small Smiles clinic, 8-year-old Rachel was diagnosed with four cavities, but her mom took her for a second opinion with pediatric dentist Dr. Robert Camps. I'm glad it wasn't done because it shouldn't have been done. He found no need to treat those teeth. As for her sister, Rebecca, Small Smiles claimed to have drilled and filled eight cavities, but Dr. Camps says the clinic never did the work, despite billing Medicaid hundreds of dollars. I found out that you know, um, my kids were just cash cows for small smiles. Dr. Williams has since left the company and his clinic closed. After all that bad publicity, the company hired respected pediatric dental expert Dr. Stephen Adair to oversee standards and training. What would be your reaction if you found out that some clinics were performing procedures that were unnecessary? I haven't been presented with evidence of unnecessary care. We've heard stories of children who were hysterical and were restrained by these boards, but who soiled themselves. Does that concern you to hear that? At, in my own practice, I would probably discontinue treatment if, if the treatment got to that, that point. In fact, he said he's emphasizing that papoose boards should only be used when necessary. The company insisted that it provides a valuable service to low-income kids who often have severe dental problems and few other dentists to turn to. They're able to look through and observe what's going on with their children. As Dr. Tony Adderley showed me in a tour of her Small Smiles clinic in Washington, D.C. last year, there's been a change in policy. There's a sign up that says parents are allowed back. Are they told that as well? They're told they can come back. She also told us she felt no pressure to produce. But Sansbury says that was not her experience at the clinic she left. It seems as if the money situation prevails over what's best for the children. The Justice Department says that was the case with Small Smiles. Just two days ago, the company agreed to a settlement with the government of $24 million. But they did not admit guilt. Three clinic workers who blew the whistle will get more than $2 million of that. As for the children we met in North Carolina, most will never forget the suffering they endured. When you think about the dentist now, how do you feel? Dad, I don't want to go back. I'm scared of a dentist. Like, real bad. <laughs>